So what we're doing is we're making some soil blocks here. Um, I'm in here in my little balcony garden. And I think what I'm gonna focus on out here, because I know so many of you um, have like just a, a small amount of space to garden in, I'm gonna kind of work this little side balcony I have as best I can. It probably gets a little less sunlight than, than would be awesome for like a lot of plant production, but aphid. Um, so yeah, I'm playing in mud today, making some soil blocks, and that is because we're just about at the end of planting. I have some eggplants right here I need to find a home for, um, but other than that, I've planted out pretty much everything that I started as far as summer crops go. So I have some seeding to do now. Um, I'm going to do like the next wave of lettuce and some sunflowers because um, some of the sunflowers I direct seeded did come up, but quite a lot of them did not. So um, I found that the soil blocks work out really well. They don't disturb the roots or anything like that. And once I see them come up, I can, you know, put them out in the garden when they're just a little bit bigger than slug bait. <laughs> so I think either the animals are digging them up in seed form or the slugs are eating the seedlings. So I'm going to make sure I have um, an abundance of sunflowers by starting some today. Okay, hi, I'm back. Can you guys see me? <laughs> Hello. All right, hold on. Maybe you can pop it styling. All right, so um, I'll show you what I'm planting. I've got lots of sunflowers. It's like a cherry rose. I've got these white knight pro cuts that are just like single stem. Those are sort of for cutting. These fun citrus ones. Try those. Yeah. Lots of autumn beauties. These always do really well. Same with these velvet queens. And they seem to hybridize with each other and come back the next year as fun combinations of the two of them. I'm just going to make my yard into like a sunflower paradise and um yeah that's gonna I'm gonna try <laughs> my mission this year is to grow a lot of tall things so that um it acts as sort of a shield to the uh very open to the public uh yard that I'm gardening in because I can't tell you how many salesmen come by and bother me um on a regular basis it's unbelievable I didn't think the door-to-door -door salesmen were still a thing. And that tells me that I'm not living in a scary enough neighborhood anymore that they feel safe doing that. So maybe, you know, it's a downside of <laughs> living with a bunch of old people. Okay, so I was feeling industrious and thought I would push this little piece of crap greenhouse thing over a little bit and uh, it broke and threw all of the soil blocks. I just spilled my watering can. Guys, I am having a day. Okay, so here's um, the sunflowers and cucumbers that we just planted. Um, so they fell down, and now I guess what I will do is just go dump this moist, um, full of sunflowers soil into the flower garden back there, maybe. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll put it out over there in the flower garden and um, I guess we'll just hope it grows. Or maybe I'll dig a ditch behind the, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dig a ditch behind the uh, garlic and just plant them in the ditch in front of the greenhouse and then maybe they'll grow up. <sighs> that was a lot of time that I just wasted. Peachy. It is officially summer solstice. I have absolutely nowhere to be today, but I decided to, um, you know, wear my favorite little cottage core dress and just vibe. Sorry, you're making it hard for me to vibe. As someone who was born in exactly the middle of the year, my birthday is on June 15th. I just turned 40. I am at the middle of my life. I was born in the middle of the year. It is the middle of the the wheel year just feels like a real good day to be like centered, you know, whatever that means. So yesterday I fixed the um, casualty with my soil blocks and I got those reseeded and put aside. So I'm feeling really good about where I'm at in the garden right now as we are at 
summer solstice. So what I really want to do today is get a garden tour shot for you guys so you can see where the garden is at. But we're going to do some nice, um, you know. <laughs> gonna harvest some herbs and we're gonna dry them and we're just gonna like maybe find some flowers to press we're gonna do summer solstice things and I also desperately need to finish watering my house plants um, because we are at peak watering every three days season and um, every year it takes me by surprise how much these plants need to be watered but <laughs> oh it's a lot let's do cozy vlog things okay yes what are you doing what are you doing, handsome? All right, so I'm watering. I'll give you guys a little peek over here at the the uh you know more ornate houseplant corner in my home which i'm i'm just dying to redo i want to paint these walls and make this look even cooler so anyway this hoya i repot um i repotted this like i don't know some months ago and it is so so happy although it's not really putting out these leaves anymore so much as the keys. So it's kind of like doing a little reverting or something here. I don't know. But she's pretty. That's the Carnosa princess, I believe, right? Queen wears the crown, princess wears the dress. Sounds about right. Okay, there's my little fern down there. That's a bird's nest fern. Here's the Obavada and the Satin Pothos from New York over here. They're, they're doing well. Snake plants, the ZZ, nice Pothos here and there, some uh, Christmas cacti in, all in between and up here in a jar. Got some air plants that are usually in a medium state of distress. Got uh, this here is a lace flower plant. I know you guys, uh, a lot of you don't see these too often, and I get a lot of comments when I put them up. But they're gorgeous, and they throw runners everywhere, and then they have these really pretty flowers, which I'm sure... Oh, yeah, you can see one coming in there. They're very cute. Hey, stop that. Stop that. I've got a uh, Brazil back here. It's Peperomia. Here is my Monstera Albo. This is the newest leaf. Very nice, very nice. Got a little damage right there. I'm not sure how, but I'm sure I touched it or something. This was the leaf before that. I got a little scared when this one came out, but they've, they've been steadily variegated since. I, I do need to cut it. It's got like the longest stem ever. Um, I just, it's growing like, like just, wild right now so I don't want to disrupt it. I got some Siltipacana over here. I got a little pothos action over here that comes down. My orchid has been blooming for months. I mean literal months at this point. I think it's just starting like it's just starting to let go of some blooms. Some very pretty new growth here on the variegated Hindu rope, Hoya Obscura, which has been putting out some growth here and there. And these grow lights do just a little bit of sun stressing to it. Got some fun begonias down here. This is the taco night, taco night, or taco night, however you want to say that. Got a lipstick plant back here came from Christy I believe uh, right here we are regrowing an amorphophallus right here this came from my friend Aaron and that is the cognac or conjac that's right I think it's cognac and uh, yeah it's a corpse flower kind of like plant it's like that 
similar. It's another fun begonia. This is a black mamba. And a lot of these were like trades and gifts and stuff like that. So they're all very sentimental to me. I love my house plants. I'm trying not to like name and show every single plant I have or we'll be here all day. Guys, look. Oh, while I was showing you my plants, I missed it. Oh, every time. Okay. Don't, don't, don't screw me over, Monique, all right? God damn it. Damn, supposed to be having fast well it's i mean it's it's within a couple minutes yeah. so it's pretty quick he likes it's like his skin splitting kind of oh so he's like cramped up in there i feel bad mm. it's almost hurt Alright, a little pinky outside when we were out here earlier in the vlog so you can see how everything has come along. So the root peppers are flushing out nice. I'm gonna come out here and treat them with some neem oil just because I tend to tend to deal with a lot of pests on my pepper leaves earlier in the season. And then we've got some aphids bothering these eggplants, but they need to go in the ground soon anyway. Um, we're still patiently waiting for the natural predators of aphids to help me out here, but um, they don't seem to be rushing to my aid. The kale, however, is doing just lovely up here. It's, it's, it's not getting so much sun that it's, you know, looking bad or bolting. There doesn't seem to be any bug pressure on it. It's just doing real nice in this little window box here. Got the lettuce that I planted coming up. Some spring onions here. Finally got a little bloom on the sweet peas. Little window box sweet peas. Some lettuce. Little catnip over there. So we've got some summer squash seedlings that I'm going to put out into the garden tomorrow morning. And we got some lettuce that came up over here. Uh, not everything has come up just yet there. These are sunflowers. Going to get those out tomorrow as well. So I'll show you real quick. This is the front garden. <clears throat> I don't usually um, do a lot on camera up here, but I have been working. This was actually the first bed that I started working on even before I started growing food here. So I haven't weed whacked, so I don't mind my overgrown borders and stuff. This is the red clover that I planted and I just love it so much. 
almost as much as the bees. You can see the salvia is starting to poop out a little bit. I wish that lasted longer, it's so pretty. Um, and then my swamp milkweed over there is starting to flower. So are the hostas. And then all of the lilies are blooming right now, which is so nice because it's it's such a short period of time that they're blooming and the rest of the time they just look like shit. Little alyssum babies down here and some violas. There's a dahlia. Oh my god, this guy, man. <laughs> Hopefully this man goes away soon because he's making a lot of noise. That is St. John's Ward, I believe, growing out of my garden randomly. Not sure if I put that there or not. I did try to grow it one year. Uh, there's some artichokes over here. Don't know if those will make it or not, you know, all the way to making an artichoke thing to eat a flower. Dahlia. This is a rose of Sharon. These come up around my yard. So some men came and trimmed the bushes and it startled me quite a lot because, sir, I was very surprised when they were here because I didn't know they were coming. So I was I, like basically yelled at them because they were strange men in my yard um, and then had to apologize after but they look very nice very nice indeed except for my pallet pile that does not look nice and I need to do something with those you can see that my wonderful amazing sweet kind hard-working handsome boyfriend partner hate calling him a boyfriend don't you guys hate that as adults um, but he put in beautiful drip irrigation for me. Can you believe this? Can you believe this man? He got it for me for my birthday and then he did and is continuing to do all of the annoying labor involved in putting it in. And I am so thrilled, so happy, so grateful because for whatever reason my neurodivergence would rather be uh, clubbed in the face than deal with any of this. So I literally just hand watered for a very long time. And then the garlic, you can see, is starting to brown up, which means it's going to come up in the next three to five weeks or so, maybe. Three to six weeks. This is the soft neck over here. These are hard necks, and I made some delicious pesto out of their scapes just last week. And then here is a bush full of delicious berries that unfortunately many have uh, little bugs in them already but i'm going to come through here pick some out and soak them in salty water and see what we can do because there are there are quite a lot of them on here this year and these are the alpine strawberries these are the native strawberries they actually came in a lot bigger this year than last year too which is pretty cool you can see like they get Pretty good size, but they're still smaller strawberry, obviously, than the grocery store ones. And then I've got more coming in here that I started this year. So, you know, I'm gonna do like a little corner border of strawberries over here. Got more hard neck garlic here. These are some baby corns down here, and then zinnia. Chives are working on their second second grow. A very sad spindly little paste tomato right here that if you can believe it looks a lot better than it did last week. A very beautiful array of lettuces here. And then we've got a whole mess of peas here that I think are going to be picked and pulled this week. A little bed here. Got the cutest little pansies ever. Those are the antique shades. These are the Costa apricot snapdragons that are coming in. This is the bird's strawberry. I leave that uncovered for them. That is my strawberry over there. This guy's doing fine right here. Gorgeous. Got some rosemary in there. Over here we've got the new bed. If you missed that vlog, that was the last one, and I will put it up here in the eye so you can check it out or it'll be at the end of the video. But um, yeah, Ollie sent me this bed out for free and I'm pretty stoked on it because um, obviously because it was free. Um, well, the, the soil wasn't, but you'll see that in the video. But it's actually, it's really doing nice. It's keeping the soil nice and warm and, and it's not drying out fast like I thought it might because of that warmth. 
Um, so it's holding moisture really well. Got the tube over here coming in. So I've just got a bunch of different kinds of basil in here. This is your classic. Oh my God, dude. Sorry, my neighborhood is so fucking loud. So, basil is looking gorge. And then I've got some little pepper buds in there. That's a sugar rush peach right there. More tiny, oh, Jesus Christ, tiny little baby tomatoes there. Give you a little sweep of the back flower bed. Looking very wild right now. Very wild. I like it that way though. This is the wild bed. I've got to come prune this down a little bit because I am pretty done looking at these, but we've got some seeds in here I can harvest, so that's cool. The lovage is uh, pretty huge this year, and I've noticed that um, hoverflies and bees really seem to like that. Got the purple echinacea right there. The cosmos are starting to flower, and I've been pinching them to try to get them bushier. Oh, for the love of God. Got some fun little alliums here. Don't actually know what these are gonna do because I don't remember what they are when I planted them, so. They might be globes, I'm not sure. <laughs> they might be more of those funky, like, waterfall looking ones, so we'll find out. <laughs> they bloom. Got some fun milkweed over here. Unfortunately, it is being pretty uh, aggressively devoured by these horrid um, aphids, so I may actually come out and at least try to blast them off with the hose or something because the ladybugs are just, they're just not doing the heavy lift in here, um, and I'm tired of breeding these things in the yard. Got some cosmos back there. These are a fun little plant. I always forget the name of them. Something pinks. I'll put it on the screen, but they came, um, supposedly they came over on the Mayflower, so they're like little colonizer plants or whatever, but um, they're, they're very cute. And they came from my um, father in love, Mike's, Mike's dad. And they just make the cutest little accent in the garden, and they're closed up at night, so you can't see them all, but that's what they look like. Just these little guys, they're so cute. I had a couple random roses come out after the rain, so these are just, just a few little buds and the otherwise pooped out rows. So I'll, I'll cut in some footage of how it looked because it was just absolutely breathtaking this year. There is some lavender back there that thankfully survived the winter. I didn't think it was going to make it. You can see the thyme is starting to flower. Little bee visiting my comfrey. This is uh, rose mint agastache. agastache. I actually started this from seed uh, two years ago, and it just stayed a tiny baby plant last year, but it actually came up nice this year. And it really does smell like rose mint, it's crazy. Uh, lone corn over here that was supposed to have friends. My beautiful lavender bush right here. I have harvested a lot off of this, and as you can see, the flowers are starting to open, so it's a little um, past the ideal of when you would want to pick it for storage, but real pretty. Smells nice. So I've got some languishing berries back there that I desperately need to plant and I'm very mad at myself for not planting yet. We won't discuss that any further. Uh, more artichokes over here. And there's different kinds. You can kind of tell by the leaves. Got lots of onions coming in strong. I have been bending these tops to sort of encourage them to make more leaves which will make bigger bulbs of onions and that's worked out good for me so far that little tip i don't know what's going on here i don't know if there's a issue with the soil over here i'm gonna have to like get a ph thing and check it out and see what's going on because i feel like this could be a lack of light they don't get as much light as those over here it could be the cooler temperatures i don't know all I, I, all I know is this neighborhood needs to shut the fuck up. Like, just, just be way quieter. Got some ground cherry plants over here, which are covered in bugs as usual. 
Oh, these little asters are getting squashed here. Also got some volunteer potatoes, which is fun. We'll see what happens with those. Finally started blooming. These are so fun. Little black pansies. Uh, this is the single carrot to germinate. <laughs> The single one out of a whole pack that I planted there. And then we've got some more carrots over here underneath these little snapdragons. Got some blueberries coming in. These plants probably need to go in bigger pots or in the ground at this point because they were struggling a little bit this year. I came out and fertilized them and they perked right back up, but I think I was a little late to get as much berries as I could have. Here's the loofah. Again, looking a little light to me, looking like it could use something. This, this is a new bed, so I expect to have some soil issues in this bed. Um, it has also been very cool and loofahs do not like that. So I'm gonna let it go for a bit and see, see how it handles things because it is starting to put on a lot of growth all of a sudden. It's just kind of an experiment that I was trying this year. These tomato plants were both volunteers. Uh, and I just kind of let them go. They're like very stocky. They just must have been in the soil that I put in here because I kind of dumped some old soil in here. There are some corn here. Can't remember which kind. Maybe glass gem or something? Uh, the yarrow is completely out of control and I need to build a little cage around this area here, clearly. Maybe divide up my plants. Because holy crap. Look at it. It's like... I'm burying all this other stuff I planted. <laughs> we got these fun little guys over here. And you can see lots of snapdragons. We've got... Oh, these guys are coming in. These are going to be gorgeous. Beautiful. Got those last year from like Home Depot or something. And then we've got all the calendula. There's a couple different kinds. There's uh, resina and then um, some kind of mix. I can't remember what it's called right now. So those, these are actually, were all volunteers. So just, you know, understand that is the nature of calendula if you plant it. However, it is very easy to pull up and you can see it really early in the spring. So you can just hand weed it out if you don't want it in certain places and be pretty successful with that, at least in my experience. One of our figs over here, the Chicago, that over there is a Chicago Hardy. This is Self Heal, which is a very cool little plant. And I oh, I think I might have missed the good harvest window on this one too, but that's okay. And then we've got some seed dahlias in here. I'm not sure what these are. <laughs> I planted them at some point that I don't remember. And then there's more celosia in there that is, you know, working its way on being a nice little tidy row of different kinds of celosia. And then there's more amaranth back there. I'm kind of hoping to have like a, you know, like a tiered display over here. The elderberry over there is working on making berries too. That's quite exciting. Oh, forgot about this guy. Here's some beans that don't seem to be doing super well. So I may, I may just pull them because I don't really like them all that much anyway. And then there are some carrots here. Here come more loud neighbors, different ones. <laughs> that kid gives this lady hell and it makes me laugh every day. So here is a bunch of carrots. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're done. So yeah, you can see the gardens it's dealing with a little bit of neglect right now. I'm not where I wanted to be food production wise, which is extremely stressful considering how necessary it now feels. Um, but all's not lost. We have those seedlings on the porch and um, the irrigation is in. That's going to be super helpful. I can focus on working on my soil now instead of watering everything by hand. So, And of course I have my local farmer's market, which is pretty affordable and I like to support them anyway. So I can always can things from there. Worst case scenario, you know. Don't mind my uh, chaotic mess of a room right now. Once again, <sighs> not doing well. <laughs> I think we're gonna leave this vlog here just so that um, I can just start fresh on a new one. Got some projects to do, obviously, out in the garden. So um, I will have you guys come along with me on that stuff. And um, yeah, until then, stay safe, uh, stay sane, <laughs> at least try. Uh, reach out if you need something and um, take care of each other. Okay, bye now. 
Alright, it's recording now.